Yeah. Thanks. I guess then maybe we should uh, go on with um, uh, the program as we're running late. And as you know, we can still write all the questions. I wanted to invite on stage someone who has been on stage just a couple of weeks ago, actually, in February 15th. That is Jonathan Dronsfeld. We had him here earlier talking, and suddenly the idea came that at the end of the presentation, so many questions started rising from the audience. So then we were very happy to invite him back. Jonathan teaches philosophy at the University of Reading, and there is a forthcoming book on Jacques Derrida and visuality uh, coming up. But also Jonathan engages in very special performative lectures, and some of it what we witnessed already in February. So we ask Jonathan to think more about the notion of questions, what is a question, and come up and share it with us. Thank you, Jonathan, for being here. As has already been mentioned, uh, I was here a couple of weeks ago and uh, what I'm about to present stands as the question that I responded to a couple of weeks ago. And if you're looking at the screen, it's from section 13. This is the contents page of a book that is only written in response to my being asked to give presentations. So I will then write a part of this book. The title of the lecture is Artist Question as Prequel to Art and Its Freedoms as Response. Let us say that there are two ways of asking a question. One, to ask a question with a view to answering it, in which case the promise of an answer will be embodied in the form of the question itself. And two, to ask a question with a view to unfolding it and showing why the question is necessary at all, why there should be such questions, a necessity demonstrated by the absence of any final answer which would put a stop to the questioning. At the same time, questions of the second sort do not lose any interrogatory force for there not being the promise of an answer. For such questions nonetheless invite or demand a response in the space opened up by their unfolding. What do we make then of artworks which explicitly raise the question of what a question is? James Lee Byers's work is one which, at least from the late 60s through to the mid 80s, is concerned again and again to raise the question of the relationship between art and philosophy by focusing on how they might both be seen as ways of being a question, of ways of being of the question of what it is to be. And with respect to two different ways of questioning we might say that what distinguishes James Lee Byers's World Question Center is that it poses questions of the second sort, namely a question to be unfolded rather than answered, whilst at the same time insisting on asking questions of the first, that is, questions which in their asking promise an answer. World Question Center calls upon eminent thinkers to ask a question which is important to them and the development of their own practice or discipline or subject field and their evolution within it. Bias requests of his respondents that they ask a question in the form of an interrogative rather than a statement. As soon as the question has been put, Bias thanks the questioner and moves on to the space in which another question is awaited. No attempt is made to respond to the questions put by those who are called upon to ask them other than the occasional acknowledgement by buyers 
that the question is indeed a worthwhile or very fine question. Sometimes the person who is called to ask a question states that he would rather be asked a question that he could answer, to which buyers replies that they have been asked a question, namely to ask a question. It is precisely by not implying in any way that the piece can provide any answers to the questions asked that World Question Center can be seen to be an answer. World Question Center does not become real as an answer to the questions posed by those who ask them, but because it stands as an answer to the question it raises as an artwork. The question it poses as an artwork is, what is art? And in posing this question, does the work become a way of answering by unfolding what is at stake in the question with respect to this particular work? At the same time then, in proposing itself as an answer to the question of what art is, does World Question Center really become a question? Artworks are also the end of questioning in two senses. Their trajectory is one of giving form to the question of what art is and they tend towards a finality of form. The form of an artwork is final to the extent that it is an answer to the question of what it is. Thus, an artwork is only a question if it is, at the same time, an answer. It must both be a question and an answer. But the answer in no way puts a stop to the questioning. Indeed, the answer is but a stage in the questioning. It is final in the sense that its form is its finality. But this finality is the form in which its questioning is unfolded. This is nothing less than the ontological difference imminent to artworks. Artworks, as questions, have two names, question and answer. Question is the ontological question of what it is to be an artwork, and answer is the finality of the work's form in which the questioning can be unfolded and space given for a response to be said. We can call that space the work's possibility. When Jean-Luc Nancy says that contemporary art is contemporary in virtue of its being a form which is above all that of a question, he means that the form only becomes a question if in the space of its actuality it touches on possibility. What he means by possibility is the possibility of signification, the signification of possible meaning, and how it might be possible to circulate such possibility. Thus any work which presents determinate significations cannot be considered to be a question, for such works will always overdetermine themselves as answers at the expense of an underdetermination or non-determination as question. If an artwork is to be a question, it must open a space in a form which is final, or in other words, in a form which could not be otherwise. But that form is a space in which we are asked to think how things could be otherwise. Artworks have a doubled responsibility, a responsibility which is at once that it presents itself as that which could not be otherwise, in such a way as to invite a response that things could be otherwise. This is why the meaning of artworks can never be reduced to the context of their presentation. Artworks reveal and invent contexts as much as respond to them. In the case of James Lee Byers's World Question Center, we might say that what is invented is a questioning space where the presence of a question is given by the absence of the very person in a position to provide an answer to the specific question raised. The questioner is absented as soon as he raises the question, which it is his expertise and authority to answer. In this sense, are the answers to the pressing and most urgent questions raised by this work of art always to come? Alain Badiou will argue that both art and philosophy are matters of questioning. Indeed, that both are questions of ontology in that they point to ontological difference. 
But Badiou likes to differentiate art and philosophy, and he does so on the basis of truth. He likes to say that both are co-implicated in a responsibility towards truth, but such that on the one hand, it is the responsibility of art to produce truths, and on the other, it is the responsibility of philosophy to show these truths. What showing truths amounts to is distinguishing between truths and mere opinion. There is simply one question today for Badiou. Is there something beside opinion? If artworks are to produce truths, then they are to produce the material for philosophy to distinguish between truth and opinion. The one question that there is today, and there is no other for Badiou, namely the singular question, is there something beside opinion, is in fact another, namely, is there something beside our democracies? How might, how might we situate this with respect to another contention made by Badiou, elsewhere than in the text he raises this question of democracy, namely, that it is the responsibility of art to, and I quote, help humanity find a new subjective paradigm. We could say that artworks produce a space in which subjects can be assisted to think their subjectivity. But if it is the case that only philosophy can separate the subject's mere opinion from truth, then that space must be such that it is not decided what the difference is between them. It must not be conceptual space of answering the question. Rather, it must be the questioning space which opens up to the concept, a space for philosophy then to intervene. For philosophy's work of showing truth is that of the concept. It is not art's work to distinguish opinion from truth. It is art's work to produce the question of the difference between them for philosophy to answer. However, we must here point out an aporia, one which Badiou does not confront. Art can only produce the question of the difference between truth and mere opinion if its space is already essentially democratic. If art is not to presuppose in advance the difference between opinion and truth, and it cannot so presuppose, for its work is not conceptual, then its space must be such that, it, that its openness allows for truth and what it is not, opinion, and thus far the only name we have for such a space is democracy. 